All right, so I'm trying something new with this uh, webcam being on. We'll see if it gets in the way or not. <clears throat> so we were talking about section, section 6.5, and I think table 26 in the book uh, is a little bit ambiguous. Um, so let's see where that uh, those computations come from. So in particular, we're trying to compute the dual. Um, so we're trying to compute CB transpose B inverse uh, and you can put a transpose on that or not. Um, and so the question is, is where does this appear? Where is this in the optimal tableau? Can we can, can we just pull it off of the tableau without having to make this computation separately? Um, so if we take a look at the tableau, and in particular, if we look at a column that corresponds to, whoops, I've got an anaconda thing coming up. Uh, if we look at a <laughs> column that starts with a slack variable, then the initial column has a zero there, and then it has a column of the identity, let's say ej. So um, when you look to see what this turns into, when you're computing the optimal tableau, the ej turns into the jth column of b inverse. Right, and then uh, the the entry underneath the SI is going to be CB transpose B inverse the jth column of B inverse, and so this is YJ the jth solution to the dual. Okay, so uh, what happens then if that's not an SI? Is there are there other variables that we might use? Why well, yes. What happens if we have uh, an excess variable, EI? We still have zero there, but the initial tableau is minus EJ, and so that's, again, the, the jth element of your identity matrix. And so if you look at the optimal tableau in that case, then you're just going to have minus B inverse the jth column. And then uh, in place of the EI, we're going to have minus CB transpose B inverse J. And so yj is the negative of this, right? And then finally, um, the book looks at what, what you do with an artificial variable, but we don't really run into that that often. But let's go ahead and take a look. If this is an artificial variable, oops, e, uh, ai, you start with a big M method. Uh, well, then we have an ei down here. Whoa. I was using J there. And so if you look at the optimal tableau in this case, what do we get? Well, this is still going to be the jth column of B inverse, but up here it's going to be M plus CB transpose B inverse J, right? And so to get YJ, subtract M. Good. I don't know why that came up. Okay, so that's, those are the three cases in, in the uh, book. Furthermore, um, let's talk about the table in table entry 26. And so in table 26, we have the following. Uh, we have Y1, Y2, Y3, uh, E1, S2, A1, A2, right-hand side. And so the book um, used a minimization problem for this, right? But remember that we're using a maximization, and so I would negate all of the row zero entries, and that would give me the following row zero. Okay, and so uh, now if I want to find out what the solution to the dual is, I would say just from this table and using our previous, uh, you know, these shortcuts that. Uh, x1, the solution to the dual, which is the primal, would come from negating the coefficient here, which would be minus 3, and then x2 would come from s2, which is 0, and then x3 comes from uh, a2, that started off with the, as the third column of the identity, um, and in this case, then, we would have a, a 1 if we just subtract m. Okay, but notice that this is this would be a solution to a min problem, right? Because this we converted to a max. 
And so therefore, in order to get the actual solution to the max problem, a max problem solution is x1 equals 3, x2 equals 0, and x3 equals minus 1. And so this way we get the answer that's in the table. Good. Oops. I will leave it there. Let's try this out.